بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا رب العالمين اللهم ارزقنا الاخلاص في الاقوال والاعمال اللهم اجعل عملنا في ذاك امين يا رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي زبر 19th class now Uh, in fact, it is the first class because uh, yesterday we completed the Nazm al Ajrumiya with the Fadl and with the Aun of Allah. And uh, this class is kind of a, a class which uh, I'll give you some very important pointers concerning uh, Al Jumla, Al Ismiya, the nominal sentence. Uh, we'll not talk about the verbal sentence right now uh, because. Verbal sentence is easy. The main problem it comes with the al jumla al ismiya, because from next week uh, we'll take up the Madina book part one. I already have shared the book in the group. You can download it, and if you wish, you can print it, or if you can get it, uh, you know, like in the hard form, hard copy, you can go and purchase it. Uh, uh, these are good uh, books, you know, in colored form. There are the colored pages in it. If you wish, you can purchase or you can take a print out. It's up to you. Or if you want, you can keep it on your system and you can take directly notes on it. So next week, what we'll be doing is we'll be applying the principles that we learned in Al Ajurumiya and we'll apply it to Madina books. And then you'll understand the importance of learning the basics, because uh, like directly studying, haza qalamun, haza kitabun, wahazihi madrasatun. Uh, it will not benefit except to you know like just muck them up and memorize those wordings it would be of really any very less benefit but after you have learned about the arab the uh, the declensions the arab and things of that nature now it is easy for you to identify where is the muqtada where is the khabar how to translate uh, all those all all this analysis will become easy so before going there Uh, we talked about uh, in Al Ajrumiya. We already have discussed about the about the Arab. Okay, we discussed about the Arab, everything related to it, uh, the uh, the signs of asma, wal afal, wal huruf. How to identify the asma and uh, how to identify the afal? Okay, so uh, we begin with we begin with the part of speech. Parts of speech, and we said there are three: uh, ism, fail, harf. These are the three uh, parts of speech in Arabic. Okay, these are the three parts of speech in Arabic: ism, fail, and harf. And we saw the, uh, you know, the three indicators of, uh, four indicators of asma. Then we saw four indicators of fal, and the remaining are proof, uh, like the the alif lam, the tanwin. Uh, okay, then, then jar. Uh, uh, then you have alif lam, you have tanwin. Uh, then jar, and then uh, huruf jar. Yani anything which comes after huruf jar or uh, huruf jara, it is also a noun. So we have separated between jar and huruf jar because uh, The state of jar could also be because it is mudafilahi, as we learnt in the last class yesterday. Because mudafilahi is always majrur, so this is the reason we say, we made distinction between jar and anything coming after huruf jar. Because mudafilahi is majrur, but not because of harf jar, but it is majrur because it is mudafilahi. This is the reason we mentioned them separately, and this is how they are four signs. And there are few more, but we are not really bothered about them at this stage. Then. For fail, we said uh, it is qad, then it is saufa, it is seen, taat tanis as sakina, qad saufa seen taat tanis as sakina. These are some of the signs of uh, uh, a fail. I mean, if you see a word and before it you see qad, then know that the word after it is fail because qad cannot come before a harf or a sum. Likewise, saufa and seen, these are known as huruf tanfis. Roof and fees, which uh, take the meaning to future. This is far future and this is near future. Then you have taat tanis as sakina, which always come uh, comes at the end of a fail. It never comes 
uh, in a ism tatanis asakina the one which comes in ism is tatanis al mutaharrika this ta marbuta this comes which is always mutaharrika it is never sakin so uh, these are the signs of uh, fal or fail and the remaining yani if if you do not have or something which doesn't accept the signs of ism or the fail they are all huruf like for example fi an okay inna in lam these are some of the examples of uh, huruf because you cannot say qad fi you cannot say al fi you cannot say saufa fi likewise for others an inna in lam they don't accept any of the signs of uh, ism or the fail these are the huruf the remaining okay after having studied this this asma afal huruf parts of speech how to identify them then we started talking about arab which is so which is in fact the most important thing uh, that we learned in uh, in the grammar so arab uh, it is of the the arab it is of uh, four types anwa on the now of arab it is four types okay this is what we learned uh, rafa nasab jar and jazm these two are common to asma and afal this is specific to asma and this is specific to or this is specific to ism this is specific to fail jazm uh, rafa and nasab is common to both uh, asma and afal so we learned about arab rafa nasab jar jazm after having studied this it is important that we also know what are the alamat of rafa nasab jar and jazm because without it how will you identify whether something is in a state of rafa or nasab or jar or jazm so this is the reason it became important to understand that the the nouns likewise the fail they are divided into two types okay morab and mabni likewise here you have morab and you have mabni so it is like what i am trying to give is a kind of a a revision a very quick revision so that you uh understand the basics or uh, you become strong in uh what we studied in uh, in the last few classes this is the basic of it that we are doing right now absolute basic so nouns you have morab mabni likewise fail you have morab mabni majority of the nouns of uh, nouns are morab majority are mabni there are six kinds of there are more but for our case yani six are more than enough at the moment uh mabniyat are like there are 10 mabniyat as maybe we'll study later in the second year inshallah if we go up to that stage then we'll study what are those 10 mabniyat out of them six we already have studied and six kinds of morabat that we have studied six morabat nouns and six mabniyat likewise in fail the asal is that they are mabni of all asal is mabni in nouns asal is that they are morab and few of them are mabni in fail the asal is that they are mabni and it is it is madi and it is am okay madi and am they are mabni okay how are they mabni we studied about that as well madi is mabni either upon the fatha or the damma or the sukun okay it is fatha or damma or sukun it is mabni al fath mabni al dam mabni al sukun this is the default state normally a fail is mabni al fath when a fail is uh, when the fail madi uh, is uh, it comes or a vowel uh, jama when it comes attached to fail madi it is mabni al dam if it comes attached to al zamail al mutahharrika al zamail al rafi al mutahharrika then it is mabni al sukun like uh, uh, the taul file taul file okay taul file like na al failin okay taul file na al failin uh, these are uh, are also nun un niswa so these are the places if uh, you see them uh, alif ul isnain yes also alif ul isnain so in all of these cases you will see that uh, uh, not alif ul isnain alif ul isnain is like uh, it will be mabni al fath so like taul fa taul failin 
taul fail naul failin nun nun niswa these are the places if you see these things these are all zamail ar raf al mutaharrika because they are uh, these are all file in a fail this taul fail always comes as file naul failin this is the reason we are calling it as naul failin it comes always as uh, file dua nun nun niswa it comes as dua so in all of these three these cases the fail madi is mabni ala sukun Okay, and if you memorize the table, you need not to remember all these things. This is just, you know, like information which may benefit you in case in, in, during the times of examinations and quizzes when you study the advanced book. If they'll give it this way, uh, that if the fail is attached to the taul file, then fail madi is mabni upon what? So if you study this, maybe you'll it will uh, help you in, you know, like attempting or you know, scoring marks in quizzes. So anyway, this is fail madi. Which is mabni upon fath, dam, or asukun. Uh, fail amr is mabni upon uh, what the fail madi is made madzum upon. A fail mudare. So fail amr is mabni upon what fail mad fail mudare is made madzum upon. So if fail mudare is madzum with sukun, so fail amr in that case will be mabni upon ala sukun. If fail uh, madi is mabni ala hasfin noon. So fail amr will be mabni ala hasfin noon. And if fail uh, amr is mabni ala hasfi harfi illa, then fail amr will be mabni ala hasfi harfi illa. This is what we studied about fail amr. And this is the this ends the discussion of madi and amr. Because it is mabni, you need not to study more about it. Mora from amongst the and also uh, mora yani fail mudare. Okay, fail mudare is mora. Except for two forms. One where noon un niswa is there, noon un niswa, and the other is noon mushaddada, which is noon uttawkid. So these two noons, when they come attached to the fail mudare, then it becomes mabni. Noon un niswa, noon uh, uh, this noon uttawkid. Either uh, mukhaffafa or musakkala. One noon, either it comes as uh, mukhaffafa with the sukoon on it, or sometimes it can come with the Tajdeed. This is musakkala or uh, this is uh, mushaddada, which is heavy. This is lighter, light noon. This is heavy noon. Both of them can come attached to the fail towards the end of it, towards the end of fail mudare. And when you have it, then in that case, fail mudare is going to be mabni. But otherwise, fail mudare normally is uh, morab. If it is morab, it will take error. Okay. So after having studied this, the next question is. How to identify the Arab, Rafa, Nasab, Jar in Ism? So, before going there, we said that the Arab, Arab, uh, either you show it, uh, either you show it, uh, Labzan or Takdiran or Mahallan. Okay, this is what we studied. Either the Arab you show it Lafzan or Taqdiran or Mahallan. These two Arab you show in Morab. And this you show in Mabni. Okay, Lafzan and Taqdiran. You show this Arab in Morab, Asma as well as Afal. While Mahallan you show the Arab in Mabniyat, be it Asma or the Afal. This is something which you must know, the basic. Where do you show Taqdiran? If it ends in weak letter, if the ism or the fail ends in ends in weak letter, you always show the arab taqdeer. These are the kawaii that I am trying to give you as a summary of the classes that we have done. Most important of it is up to arab only. All everything after it is nothing, but it will be the application of arab. It depends on that. The marfuad, the mansubad, the majrurat, it is nothing. You there are some, some certain things which you need to memorize. Like marfuad, you need to memorize muqtada khabar. But how will you identify whether something is muqtada by knowing that it is marfu? And how will you know it is marfu by knowing the signs of it? Uh, the marfuat, the signs of uh, the rafa state. So oh, everything comes back to this only. So this is the basic. So anyway, taqdeer and arab you will show whenever a letter ends in, whenever an is a word ends in a weak letter, be it ism or a fail, it remains the same. So arab taqdeeran. Lafzan in every all other cases where the uh, word is not ending in a weak letter and weak letter are only three, alif, waw, ya. These are the weak letters, alif, waw and ya. 
सो इफ यू सी अ नाउन एंडिंग इन अलिफ और एनी वर्ड बी इट नाउन और फेल एंडिंग इन अलिफ और ए वाव और ए या नो दैट द एराब इज गोइंग टू बी तकदीरन एंड तकदीरन लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल मूसा सो यू हैव अलिफ मकसूर एट द एंड अलिफ मकसूरा सो एरा विल बी तकदीरन ओके सम पीपल दे मेक मिस्टेक दिस दे थिंक दैट इट इज मबनी सो दे से नो हियर द एरा इज मबनी नो इट इज वीक लेटर मबनियात आर फिक्स्ड दिस इज अ रीजन यू मस्ट मेमोराइज दोस सिक्स मबनियात लाइक ज़मायर अस्माउल इशारा अस्माउल मौसूला एंड देन द हुरूफ अल इस्तफाम लाइकवाइज द दिस हुरूफ ऑफ शर्त एंड बाद ज़ुरूफ there is some you should memorize this it should be at the back of your mind it should be at the back of your mind so those are only mabniyat when you see musa is musa out of those six things no which means it is not mabni it is morab if it is morab i it will show the era by the lafzan or taqdiran but if it is ending in a weak letter it will show the era of taqdiran so this is the uh, this is this this should be the uh, process of flow of information in your mind so isa musa likewise others like can have uh, Uh, no is asma with the ending in uh, like uh, for example al qadi it is ending in ya al qadi ending in ya likewise the word al madi itself fil madi it ends in ya so it will take the arab how it will take the arab taqdeer and because it is a also know that if you have alif then rafa nasab jar All three are takdiran. If you have a word ending in alif, either it is this form of alif or this form of alif. It doesn't matter whether it is this form of alif, alif maksura form, or normal standing alif. All the three arab, if it is asam, will be shown takdiran. Rafa na sabjar. Why? Because alif cannot take any harka. It is most stubborn. It never takes any harka. It only takes sukun. So it will take all the three arab takdiran. If it ends in a ya or a vow, it will show the rafa and the jar. It will show rafa and the jar takdiran, and nasab. It can show lafzan. Why? Because it can take fatha like al qadiya, al madiya. It is possible. It is easy to read fatha on it, but it is difficult to read a uh, damma or a kasra. Al qadiyu. A bit of effort is required. Al madiyu. Effort is required. Likewise, al qadi yi. It is most difficult because kasra is the heaviest harka in the Arabic language. So al qadi yi is the most heavy uh, way of reading it. This is the reason the Arabs they say no. We we don't read. We will not read the damma and the kas the damma and the kasra on the on the weak letter ya as well as on wow. Wow yeah. This is the reason rafa and jar. You can show uh, it will show uh, takdir and arab while the nasab state it can show. Lafzan, as we have seen the example. So this closes the K chapter of uh, Takdiran. How to show the Arab Takdiran? They call it as when when an alif comes, when an alif comes towards at the end of a word, they say this uh, word is uh, you know like for example if it is Musa and Musa is coming as a file, they say Musa fa'ilun. Say Musa fa'ilun, and uh, uh, a file marfu. فائل مرفوع وعلامة رفعه الدم المقدرة على آخره منع من ظهورها لسه دس منع من ظهورها التعذر تعذر يعني inability ظهورها التعذر التعذر means inability because alif is there is uh, yani it is incapable of showing the, the any harka so this is the reason at tazur means inability of alif to show any harka so this is a statement normally you will see written in the books of arab man amin zuhuriha at tazur is tazur this is incapable alif is incapable of showing any harka when you will see this waw and ya at the end then they will say the same thing uh, for example al qadi If al qadi is coming as a file, so they will say al qadi file marfu wala matu rafhi al dama al zahira ala akhirihi mana amin zuhuriha not at tazur. So he, here it is not tazur; 
it is possible you can read it but the, uh, here it is they, they call it as asiqal heaviness asiqal so the reason why this dhamma and the kasra are not visible on this ya or the wow is is the reason is asiqal heaviness it becomes heavy if you add it so the reason will change and there is one more third reason uh, if there is a ya al mutakallim coming uh, if for example akhi so in akhi you have ya mutakallim it is known as al ya al mutakallim the ya of first person when this comes then the reason there are only three reasons first reason second reason is siqal third reason for taqdeeri arab is this coming of ya al mutakallim okay so don't worry about how we say but they they say that because the mahal the place of arab is occupied by the harka al munasiba bi al ya al mutakallim because the harka which is munasib appropriate for the ya is kasra so always what this ya does it pulls every harka if it is dhamma it pulls it to kasra if it is fatha it again pulls it to kasra why because this is the harka compatible with the ya this is the reason they say it that way but don't worry this is just to give you an overview of what we are doing so we are done with the taqdeeri arab as well now let us go to the arab which is lafzan if it is lafzan again you can divide into two parts okay asli and far'i which means this is primary and secondary primary and the secondary arab okay primary arab are three okay dhamma fatha kasra and if you consider the tail then sukun jazm these are the primary arab everything other than that wow alif ya noon either a presence of noon or uh, absence of noon or has harf illa all of these are secondary wow alif ya noon has harf illa or has fin noon or subut in noon all of these are the far'i alamat secondary alama okay again this may help you in quizzes if you understand this basic concept so asli and far'i this is another way of dividing the lafzan arab now after having studied this that the arab can be divided into asli and the far'i now again this arab now we have to know the how to identify the rafa nasab and jar okay like again the arab either either it will come as a, either you show the arab bil haraka or you show bil huruf okay either you show the arab bil haraka or you show bil huruf bil haraka is same either you call it primary or secondary so primary secondary primary ha harakat are always bil primary uh, you know alamat are bil haraka and secondary alamat normally are bil huruf so this is also now after having known this now we need to understand the arab for rafa nasab jar and jazm so rafa uh, if you if you memorized those murabbat okay so you say you have mufrad you have jam ut taksir you have a uh, sound feminine plural this is one group then you have sound masculine plural you have dual you have a small khamsa let me write down only five okay five for a small khamsa so you have mufrad you have let me write down b for broken plural this is mufrad broken plural sound feminine plural jam mannas as salim sound masculine plural jam mudakkar as salim dual tasniya asmaul khamsa this is second group the first group shows the arab bil haraka and the second group shows the arab bil huruf okay so this is bil haraka bil huruf now rafa and subjar now let us write down if you write down mufrad broken plural sound feminine plural sound masculine plural dual five let us keep on writing down how the rafa will show the arab how mufrad will show arab in rafa state dhamma 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 is that clear sound masculine plural wow dual alif small khamsa wow okay we'll do the fail later then you have nasab how will you show the nasab primary definitely it is fatha 
broken plural it is fatha sound feminine plural it is kasra now it is secondary alama okay sometimes secondary alama uh, becomes bilharka also as in case of sound feminine plural because we said that in the nasab state in the nasab state the uh, primary harka is the primary uh, alama is fatha but it has changed from the primary alama why because sound feminine plural it shows its nasab with the kasra like muslimatin mu'minatin so sound feminine plural it shows its nasab state with the kasra then you have sound masculine plural it will show with the ya dual with the ya with alif okay so you have one two three four indicators here here for isam only one two three here you have three indicators for isam only four for nouns only jar how will you show the jar the basic alama is kasra okay uh, then you have broken plural broken plural broken plural will show kasra or fatha if it is mamnu minas sarf okay if it is mamnu minas sarf then it will show with the fatha it will show the jar state with the fatha so this is secondary alama now because primary is kasra anything other than that will become secondary alama so it is uh, fatha this is as usual kasra okay so kasra kasra fatha kasra and again this is ya 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 so here you have uh, three alama as well 1 2 3 so 3 4 3 is that clear this is how you do it this is how you can just draw write it like this whatever uh, it is easy for you to memorize and understand you can do it so we are done with see so quickly so quickly we are able to do the revision of uh, the arab now we have afal now we have afal okay afal are of two types five in your pocket and you have afal or amsilatu al amsilatu al afal khamsa this is noon aata hai noon jata hai noon comes and noon goes and this is five in your pocket these are like yafalu tafalu tafalu afalu nafalu and the remaining except for the noon un niswa things the two noon un niswa all others are afal al khamsa like the one wherein you see alif ul musanna or where you see waw ul jama'a or where you see ya ul mukhataba these are the ones with noon ending in the end afal al khamsa like yaf alani yaf aluna taf alani taf aluna and taf alina these are the five either you will have an abil alif ul musanna for dual or you have waw ul jama'a in them or you have ya ul mukhataba whenever you have these three then know that it is from an afal al khamsa or al amsilatu al khamsa now here in the afal how will you show the arab again you have rafa you have nasab and you have just am not jar okay or instead of writing in this way let us write down as earlier nasab jazam okay now again here we write down five in your pocket and uh just a minute we need some space need some space so let us write down here so here you have five in your pocket here we divide them into two parts and here you say uh afal khamsa okay uh five in your pockets you have uh, uh ending in sahi letter okay which is uh, this is ending in weak letter like let me write down alif waw or ya okay ending in alif waw or ya it is sahi you can i uh, uh, should be able to understand what i mean ending in a sahi letter and other than alif waw ya and if it is ending in alif waw ya normally it will never end in an it appears to be ending in an alif 
what it, if if at all it appears in even though if it appears to be ending in an alif uh, it will be a waw or a ya only so basically it goes back to these two only because the root letters root letter can never be alif there is difference between alif and hamza okay this difference between alif and hamza alif is not like hamza hamza can be root letter alif can never be root letter if you see alif appearing like as in this case da a so this alif is not alif it is actually a waw which has converted into alif because of the rules of uh, elal and ibdal which uh, are normally studied in the in the sarf in the subject of sarf so anyway alif will never be a root root will only be waw or ya so this is the reason it all boils down to only waw and ya so five in your pocket either you can have a sahi letter at the end of the word or you can have a weak letter at the end of the word okay uh, mu'tal al akhir they call it as mu'tal al akhir al mu'tal al akhir mu'tal is weak al akhir means last last letter is weak so when we say last letter is weak either it is waw or ya as in case of for example yad'u or yarmi okay yad'u yarmi or also it uh, like uh, as we as they say yakhfa yakhfa for example so it is ending in an alif it is ending in a ya but this alif is not actually alif it is uh, we'll come to know it is something else it is either it is waw or a ya only but it appears right now as an alif or again uh, on for the because of the rules of elal and ibdal which are studied in surf so this is and it is written in this way but actually the root is uh, not alif root is either waw or ya how do you come to know of it yeah, yeah you have to go back to the masdar you have to go back to the masdar of that word and it will make it either masdar or tazghir and all of these things are studied in surf so surf will help you in understanding the roots so anyway you have uh, five in your pockets sahi okay if the last letter is a sahi letter then uh, we'll write the arab here if the last letter of the fail we are talking about the roots only roots okay so because sometimes you can have like for example yad una don't say that the last letter is noon no we are talking about the last root letter last root letter noon is not the root letter noon is the noon ul arabi this is the noon of arab it it, it it is telling you that this fail is in the rafa state so this is known as noon uh, noon al arabi uh, noon al arabi but actually la, actual last letter is this wow again with difference of uh, opinion amongst the scholar because there are two wows we are not going to go into those details but anyway this is the last letter so when we say the last letter is wow or ya then we are talking about the root letter the last root letter is wow or ya or the lamul kalima as the sarfiyun they say lamul kalima so if lamul kalima is wow or ya because lamul kalima is the last root letter fa ala in fa ala this is the uh, lam kalima is the last root letter the third root letter root letter number 3 so root letter number 3 is ali wow or ya so don't say that noon is the uh, last letter no last letter means the third lamul kalima the last third root letter out of the three the third root letter okay so if it is sahi then how do you show in five in your pocket rafa with the dhamma nasab with the fatha and jazam with the sukoon simple if it is ending in waw or ya then it will again be dhamma but muqaddara you know we talk, talked about this waw or ya because it is these are weak letters so you show these two taqdiran this one has harf illa has arf illa you will omit the weak letter because you cannot have sukun over sukun already waw or ya have sukun how can you put another sukun over sukun so better to drop them so has harf illa this is how you show the arab in five in your pocket sahi as well as motal al akhir here it is absolutely simple rafa subut in noon nasab hasfnoon jar hasfnoon okay so alhamdulillah this is with the you know like in i believe uh, in less than like 40 minutes we are able to complete right from the beginning until this day so if uh, i can do you can also do if i ask you to explain uh, as we did 
So last week, if I asked you to explain, it should not be something difficult for you to explain until era when each one of you should be able to do it. Each one of you should be able to do it. Even after watching this, if you want to watch this class, you should be able to do it. Right now, we have done this. Now, we are going to go into something which I want to give you, which you will not find in any of the books, is nominal sentences. How will you analyze the nominal sentence? Because when we'll take up the Medina book, it will become straight, it will start straight forward with this. Okay, this is the, these are the first things that you'll see in Madina books. Haza Kalamun, Haza Kitabun, Ahazihi Madrasatun, Haza Mindilun, and such kind of statements will come and they'll ask you, okay, translate. Very easy, they will translate, this is a pen, this is a book, this is a house, this is a school, and this is a handkerchief, and you will see them, the students doing it, and you like feel, oh, they are grammarians. No, they are not grammarians. They have been, the, the teacher has Ask them to muck, up, muck it up. They did it and now they are doing it. No, we don't want to do it. We don't want, this is not the approach. This is not the approach. I don't appreciate that approach. The scholars, the ulama, they say, man, man, hurimal uh, usul, hurimal usul. The one who has been deprived of the basics, he has been deprived of reaching the goal and the target. He will be deprived of, not, may not be today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, after one year, after two years. This student will stuck up. This student will stuck up. As I told you in my first class, if you remember, I went and I met students. They were doing this course with a Muhammadi Alim. This Alim took him, took these students to Medina Book 2. And they did not know how to identify a fail from an ism and a ism from, from a harf. They did not know it. And all of them were translating this. You may say that it's all right. The purpose has been served. The purpose, you may say, the purpose has been served. After all, this is what we do, want to do. This is what we are looking forward to, that we should be able to translate the Quran and the Sunnah and the things of that nature. I say no. You'll stuck up. You'll stuck up when you go further. When you pick up the books of the scholars, you'll stuck up. Take it from me. Take it from me. This is the process. This is the approach. Whatever books you take up, if at all, I, I don't say that these books are not good. These books are good. Uh, uh, you know, the history is witness to it. That these books are very good. The Dina book is, some, is a very good book. History is witness to it. But we need a teacher of that caliber to teach these books in a manner that uh, these books are supposed to be taught. So it is not the problem of the book. It is the problem with the teacher. Is that clear? So now I'll give you some rules. I'll give you some rules concerning nominal sentences. A nominal sentence is the one which begins with a noun, as I told you earlier. Now, the problem is, in Arabic, you don't have is, am, are. In, uh, when you see a, Arabic, a sentence in Arabic, which is a jumla ismiya, like if you see, arrajulu, Alimun. So, where is is MR? There is no is MR in Arabic. These are not there in Arabic. These are, by the way, these are auxiliary verbs or helping verbs in, Arabic, in English. It, you, you must have them. But in Arabic, you know, they say we don't want all, this, all these things. It is to be estimated. Is MR is to be estimated. When you are translating, you need them. And immediately looking to the sentence, they understand that this is Jumla Ismiya, this is Muqtada, this is Khabar. So now in this class, I'm going to give you rules, five rules by which you will be able to identify the Muqtada and the Khabar if you apply them properly. And we already talked about Muqtada Khabar, they are from the Marfuad. And this is the reason I said in the beginning that I am talking about only nominal sentences because Muqtada and Khabar, they only come in nominal sentence. Jumla Felia, there is no Muqtada and Khabar in Jumla Felia. There is fail and file. Okay. So now, how do you identify the uh, hidden is MA so that you can put a line in between and you know that before it is Muqtada and after it is Khabar. And once you know that, translation is easy. You can easily put is MR. Is MR, it depends on uh, you know the number, whether it is singular, dual, plural. On that grounds, you will apply is MR. And I believe this is not something which is very difficult, which you understand where to put is and where to put M and where to put R. 
okay appropriate way so now the first rule is you now we talked about if you remember we talked about zamair we talked about the zamair okay the uh, detached pronouns zamair ad zamair al munfasila what are and this is the reason it is important that you memorize them if you have not done it go and do it what are those for example who are huma hum hiya huma hunna anta antuma antum anti antuma antunna ana nahnu all of these are known as ad zamair al munfasila these are detached pronouns and they always come as muqtada detached pronouns they always come as muqtada okay which means the first rule if you see zamair munfasila any of the zamair munfasila like for example huwa talibun this is a sentence whenever you see a zamir munfasil know that it is muqtada and there is a line break in between where you will put the is ama huwa talibun he is a student immediately no need to think no need to think is am are put right in between huwa talibun mark a line you know this is muqtada this is khabar translated properly first rule zamir munfasil after zamir munfasil is am are will come okay rule number 2 you know we talked about inna wa akhwatuha inna wa akhwatuha there are six inna anna ka anna lakinna laita la alla these six memorize them if you haven't there are these simple things which you have to memorize inna anna ka anna lakinna laita la alla these are the six inna wa akhwatuha so whenever you see inna wa akhwatuha and after inna what comes ismu inna so when you see for example inna and then ismu inna know that there is a break wherein you will put the is amar inna allaha rahimun inna allaha ghafurun okay so you have to put in is amar immediately after the ismu inna rule number 2 rule number 1 after zamir munfasil rule, rule number 2 after the ismu inna ism of inna you have to put is amar sometimes the ism inna is delayed delayed like for example uh like it may be inna fil uh baiti and then you say rajulan so then in that case you know you will put somewhere here indeed in the house is you will put here so don't get confused because normally the sentence structure is inna rajulan fil baiti okay inna rajulan fil baiti normally yeah so this is how you do but normally this is how it will be the isam inna will come immediately after inna and then you put is mr in between them if it is like this kind of structure uh, like as the example was cited in nafi khalqis samawati wal ardi ayatul ayatun or ayatin in nafi khalqis samawati wal ardi la ayatin so that is uh, uh, ismu inna but it is delayed so these cases will be very rare otherwise normally this will happen second number 3 it has to do with the uh asma ul ishara you know we talked about haza hazihi which uh, normally you'll see in madina book immediately in the second chapter they will immediately introduce this or in right from the beginning only haza kitabun hazihi madrasatun this will help you there so when you see uh, asma ul ishara this haza hazihi ha ulai ulaika these are all asma ul ishara so if an ism comes after asmaul ishara which is which does not have an alif lam before it then put a is mr immediately after haza like for example haza rajulun there is no alif lam 
upon rajul which means here you will put an is mr immediately after the uh, isam ishara put is mr because this is going to be mubtada and this is going to be khabar aza rajul this is a man this is a man this is qaida number 3 aza rajul if it is not there then yes there is a problem if it is alif lam is there then you cannot put is mr like if it is like haza ar rajulu now now you cannot put is mr in between because haza ar rajulu alif lam is there so this is is some ishara this is musharun ilaihi yani you are pointing to and you will translate it as this man this man not this is the man no this man this man has a rajul here it is this is a man has a rajul has a baitun this is a, this is the reason the first chapter when we'll take up in uh, madina book this is how it begins has a kalamun has a is muqtada and kalamun is what khabar why because has a the word after it is not preceded with alif lam it is not preceded with alif lam so you will not translate it as this house rather you will say this is a house this is a pen this is a spoon this is a handkerchief this is how you trans translate it okay so this this will be this qaida will be handy when we'll take up the madina book so this is muqtada this is khabar now when you have identified with muqtada khabar see khabar it is always marfu see the khabar is marfu what is the alama of it being marfu damma why it is there is damma because it is mufrad is a mufrad if it was something else then it will show the arab accordingly with the waw or with the alif it is tasniya or uh, yes this is what it is in rafa for asma for nouns okay so this is this is qaida number 3 inna inna allah uh, first one is huwa talibun then inna allah rahimun then haza rajulun this is it then you have a uh, qaida number 3 this is c we saw the qaida number 1 after every zamair al munfasila every detached pronoun after it you put a hidden is mr huwa is talibun anta ar mudarrisun ana am muhandisun nahnu ar muslimun okay so you'll put in between because these are all zamair munfasila so after it so this this is muqtada and the after it is khabar second qaida you see inna wa akhwatuha after the ism of inna wa akhwatuha as in this case inna allah is ghafurun inna ka ar tajirun indeed you are a trader inna hum ar dallun indeed they are misguided ones la allah is maridun perhaps he is sick so la allah see this zamir is the ism la allah ism la allah so immediately after it would put put a is la allah perhaps he is sick then asma ul ishara we saw after asma ul ishara if it is not preceded with alif lam as in all of these examples haza kitabun ha ulai mubtadiun ha ulai ar mubtadiun ulai ka ar muflihun tilka is ummatun kad khalat so immediately after tilka is is ma which means this is mubtada and after it is khabar ummatun is khabar tilka is mubtada ummatun is khabar then the fourth qaida uh, marifa and nakira whenever you see a change from marifa to nakira yani there are two nouns one of them is marifa the other is nakira marifa which means either you will see it with the alif lam because uh, the ma'arif they are six as we studied uh, you have zamair prona uh, pronouns you have alam proper names you have uh, asma ul ishara asma ul mausula they are all ma'arif uh, muhalla bil al a noun which is preceded with al as in this case ar rajul and the sixth one is the mudaf to any of the above five so if you see any one of those coming in and then after it is a nakira like here nakira salihun yani it is not one of those six so ar rajulu salihun this is marifa this is nakira so when you have a marifa and nakira now then in between them put an is mr ar rajulu ar rajulu salihun so this is marifa this is nakira in between is mr which means this is muqtada this is khabar here muhammadun it is ism alam it is alam alam is from the ma'arif which means it is marifa rasulun is nakira muhammadun rasulun masla aslam is the messenger of allah so is will come in between an nisa'u see it is uh, there is alif lam before it an nisa'u and then musafiratun are traveling the women are traveling but this is marifa this is nakira in between is mr okay so this you will see lot of examples of this nature likewise it could we saw the example with the uh, asma ul ishara here see this is also marifa 
haza then kitabun is nakira so this is how you solve you can also solve this example by applying this qaida as well this is marifa this is nakira marifa nakira haza kitabun if it were like for example haza al kitabu this is marifa this is also marifa so the rule number 4 is not fulfilled you cannot place is mr you know this is in basic yani uh, by default this is how it is but sometimes based on the balaghi benefits it is possible we are not talk, going there right now as allah says zalik al kitabu so some of the mufassirun they have they said that this is jumla ismiya zalika is mubtada and al kitabu is khabar do it both of them are uh, you know marifa but still but this this is something which is discussed in the books of balagha we are talking about now and in principle in nahu mubtada is mubtada is marifa this is a qaida basically and khabar is nakira this is the basic information you can't call it as default state mubtada is always marifa khabar is always nakira in general when it is not then it is because of the balaghi qawaid it is because of the balaghi and rhetoric benefits which is discussed in the books of balagha and what are the benefits of it these all these things are discussed in the books of balagha but we are talking about the nahaw in nahaw this is the rule mubtada is marifa khabar is nakira if it is not then there are balaghi benefits basic default is this mubtada marifa khabar nakira always see mubtada marifa khabar nakira ha ulai marifa mubtadiun nakira الرجل معرفة صالح النكيرة محمد معرفة رسول النكيرة. Okay, likewise it can also begin with the أسماء الموصولة like الذي. It could it could come as مبتدا الذي. The one who. And then something will come here which is known as سلا. سلا تو الموصول they call it as always when you have a uh, اسم موصول الذي الذينا after it a sila will come which will be a sentence which will be a sentence otherwise we will not be able to know what this you cannot have like you cannot have like allazi allazi talibun it doesn't make sense yani the one who is a student no this is not complete statement there must be something after allazi to clarify like for example allazi Ja'ani amsi, the one who came to me yesterday is a student. Now the sentence will so there will always be a sila, this sila after allazi, which will always be a sentence. Always be a sentence. So allazi after allazi, a sentence will come, which is known as uh, uh, okay. So allazi uh, uh, after it, you will get a sila. It is known as sila, and don't worry, we can inshallah this will study later. Bismillah taala. But just a basic idea. So anyway, Allazi is marifa, and the one which is coming after it is nakira. So this is how. But there will be a sila here. But there will be a break after the sila, wherein is mr will come, and then you will say uh, talibun. Let me write it down so that it becomes clear what I mean to say. So you have like. Allazi, Allazi, Jaani, Allazi, Jaani, the one who came to me. Okay, and you will say Al Ams, Allazi Jaani Al Amsi, and then you say Talibun. So all of it up to here is like Muftada, and then you have the Khabar here. This is known as sila. Jaani al amsi is the sila, the one who came to me yesterday. What happened to him? He is a student. This is the khabar. This is muftada. This is khabar. Jaani sila tul mausul, and it has no place, no Arabic place. You it, you cannot say is it marfu. No, you will say la mahal la laha min al Arab. It is no Arab, and this we'll study inshallah in the second level, wherein we'll study. Uh, Uh, a book by Ibn Hisham, rahimahullah, wherein he will give us some advanced concepts about the sentences, sentences coming in places where they have Arab, and sentences which do not have any Arab, like La Mahalla Laha Min Al Arab. 
So Ibn Hisham al Ansari will give us some basic information about that. So if we reach up to that stage, we'll study this as well. So anyway, this is the fourth one. And the fifth Qaeda is known as the Qaeda of break in the chain. Qaeda of break in the chain. So what, we do, what do we mean by Qaeda of break in the chain? Like if you see this statement here. Fi bayti rajuli. See, fi bayti ar rajuli as salihi haza. You have to identify is there a break in the chain or not. Okay, you have to identify is there a break in the chain or not. This is a complete chain. This is one word, this second word, third word, fourth word, fifth word. Wherever the break comes first time, wherever the first break comes, this is the place where you have to put the is MR. This is the Qaeda. See, is there a break between fee and bait? No, because fee is harf jar and bait is isam majroor. So they are connected. We saw yesterday in makhfudat. The first makhfud is jar majroor. So this is harf jar. This is isam majroor, which means nothing can come. Is MR cannot come in between because they are connected. Jar majroor. Now let us see between bait and rajul. Is it possible? Can something come in between them? See, bait is mudaf. It is C light. Fi baiti. There is no alif lam and there is only single haraka. Fi baiti. Ar rajuli. This is mudaf. This is mudaf ilahi. And nothing can come between mudaf and mudaf ilahi. Again, there is a connection between bait and rajul. So there is no break right now. So fi and bait, there is no break in between. Bait ar rajul, there is no break in between. It is mudaf mudaf ilahi. Ar rajul as saleh. Is there a break in between? No. Why? Because this is mausuf and this is sifa. Sifa mausuf. And Sifa Mausuf, nothing can come in between them. This is noun and adjective pair. A Rajul and a Saleh. Okay. Likewise, a Saleh, a Saleh and Haza. This is also nothing can come in between because this is Isam Ishara and Musharun Ilahi as Rajul. So here also nothing can come in between. So this is a phrase. This is not a sentence. It is a phrase, which means in uh, this Haza could be for Rajul or it could be for Bait in this house of the righteous men. This is how it translates to in this house. This, his, this goes back to Bait, but it could also go back to, go back to the Rajul. Yani in the house of this righteous man, you can say, or you can say in this house of the righteous man. So this Haza could be for Bait and it could also go back to a Rajul. So in any case, this is not a sent sentence because it is all connected. It is all connected. See what is the connection? This is what I have defined in the next page. Okay. Uh, here. See, there is a rabd. All, way, all of them are connected. Fi and bait are connected. Jar majroor. Bait and rajul are connected. Mudaf mudaf ilahi. Ar rajul and sali connected. Sifa mausu. Haza and bait are also connected because this haza is uh, musharun ilahi for bait. Uh, this is islam ishara for bait. They are all connected. There is no space anywhere to put is MR, which means the uh, this is the uh, Muttada is missing. Muttada is missing. Yani in this house of the righteous men, uh, for example, is a student, you can say Talibun. This Talibun, when it will come, it will be the Muttada. In this house of the righteous men is a student. Then you can write here Talibun here. That will be Muttada and all of it is Khabar. So this is known as the uh, rule of break in the chain. Okay, If you don't understand this all right, because it covers actually the first four, already covers this Qaeda. Because if you see, Ar Rajul As Saleh, there is a break in the chain. Because Ar Rajul and As Saleh, they are not connected in any way. See, they are not Jar Majroot, number one. Is there a Harf Jar? Ar Rajul is Harf Jar? No. So, Saleh cannot be some majroot. Is it mudaf? It is not even mudaf because there is alif lam. We said a mudaf. You never see alif lam on it. So, it is not mudaf. So, it is not even mudaf. Mudaf ilahi. Okay. Likewise, is it inna? Uh, why some inna? No, there is no inna and there is no. Because if it is inna and isam inna, it is a rupt between them. As we saw, inna allaha. So, between inna and allaha here, between inna and the isam inna, nothing can come. So it is not even that. Likewise, mudaf uh, mudafili, uh, it is not there. Likewise, it is also not sifa mausuf. Yani it is not that this is sifa, uh, this is mausuf, and this is sifa. Why? Because see, it is not with alif lam. 
for sifa mausuf it is necessary that the sifa must match the mausuf in all the properties four properties which we studied what are those four properties ihram okay then gender then number and then definiteness a uh, sifa must match the mausuf in all these four properties in this case sali it is not matching the uh, mausuf in the definiteness this is definite and this is indefinite so there is a break in between so all of those qawaid which we saw four of them earlier uh, this last qaida carry covers all of them so either you memorize this last qaida or either you or if it is not then the first four qawaid are more than enough for you to identify the break in the chain that uh, if there is a break in the chain definitely you put is mr in between now there are some exercises here we'll see see huwa talibun we'll apply the qaida number 1 see huwa is zamir munfasil so immediately after zamir munfasil we'll put what we'll put is mr he is a student fil jamia this is an additional information we are not worried about that the first break occurs here immediately after huwa okay so huwa talibun he is a student ha ulai ar rijalu Ah, uh, ulai are can it come in between here? No, because this is preceded with alif lam. So is mr cannot come here. Okay, can it come after al muslimun or between al rijal and al muslimun? It cannot even come uh, there uh, because this is mausuf and this is sifa. Al rijalu al muslimun it matches in all the four properties. So it is sifa mausuf. So it cannot come here as well. can it come between these two yes it is possible is mr can come here why because there is no connection between them al muslimun and al musafirun there is no connection between them so this is the khabar and the first uh, initial part is the mubtada ha ula ir rijal al muslimuna musafirun this is actually mubtada and this is the khabar of the mubtada ila makkah is further information jar majroor to it and there is no problem this is extra but the first break which occurs in the chain is where you have to put the is mr If you see in nafi khalki samawati wal ardi ayatin, in nafi khalki samawati wal ardi ayatin. So see in na, now in na and fi. Okay, so either indeed actually here you have this isam in na is delayed because see in na is harf, fi is also harf. A harf cannot come before a harf. So we understand that because we studied earlier, you know, uh, this uh, harf. it cannot come upon you cannot say fi qad you cannot say uh, inna fi this is something which is unusual which means it will tell you that this something has happened which will give the which is uh, you know like give the balaghi and the rhetoric benefits that this khabar has come forward the actual ism is lying somewhere here inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi ayatil li ulli al albab so this is the ism of inna and you will put is mr here is mr here indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth are signs this is how you do ar rijalu qawwa munasi this is marifa this is nakira put it in between the men are the maintainers over the females the women so is mr will come here hum al kafiruna haqqan hum al kafiruna haqqan here also you will put it here why because this is dhamir al munfasil We studied uh, immediately after the Mir Munfasil. You have to put these M R. Umul Kafirun. They are the disbelievers. Nahnu Auliya Ukum. Put immediately after the Mir Munfasil. We are your Auliya. We are your friends in this life. Oh. Nahnu Auliya Ukum. Fil Hayati Dunya Fil Akhira. Inna Anzal Nahu. Okay. Here in a verbal sentence, there is no 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 because this is Anzal Nahu is Jumla Ismiya. You you cannot say. after inna always we are talking about jumla ismiya only where in the khabar is not a jumla khabar is not a jumla if the khabar is coming as jumla like in this case anzalna hu is fail madi so which is coming as khabar okay we studied the khabar is of how many uh, two types either it is jumla or it is shibu jumla jumla means it is jumla ismiya jumla fail ya shibu jumla means jar majrun and zarf so if the khabar is jumla either jumla ismiya or jumla failia then normally you don't put is mr in translation like if i say zaidun ama ama means stood zaid stood do we say zaid is stood or zaid are stood don't don't say it this way we say zaid stood khalas 
so normally when jumla ismiya a jumla failia comes as the khabar you normally don't use is mr in between so that question does not exist here where to put is mr no need to put is mr translation without is mr will work when when you have a jumla failia coming as the khabar especially if the jumla failia is fail madi if it is fail mudare still there are times when you can translate it with is mr like uh, zaidun yaqum zaidun yaqum so this is jumla failia but it is jumla fail mudare so you can translate it either as zaid stands zaid stands because yaqum you have to translate it as present tense zaid stands or you can also translate it as zaid is standing this is also a way of translating this jumla ismiya when it is uh, uh, this uh, jumla failia when it is fail mudare this is also a way is standing you can say zaid is standing one way of saying it okay but anyway this is uh, uh, these are the five pointers which i thought of uh, you know like uh, uh, giving it to you so that it uh, benefits you uh, when we start uh, the madina book and if you understand this much we can do the whole madina book on this on the principles that we have studied today as well as the basic information of arab that we have studied uh, as we take up the uh, madina book inshallah from next week bismillah taala so this is all i have for uh, this morning see you inshallah next week uh, until then subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu alla ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaikum Okay so